Was there a huge conspiracy to dethrone a powerful local Republican? That appears to be what Pete Beck's attorney wants a judge to believe as Beck's massive securities fraud case moves through day three. Beck's indictment came following a Local 12 investigation back in 2012. Rich Jaffe, who broke the story, is in the newsroom now with today's developments. Rich? Brad, today was the first chance that Beck's lead attorney has had to try and tear apart the veracity of the state's primary investigator with the Division of Securities. What I think we're going to see over the next few weeks is a defense that's going to attempt to blame, blame every other person involved in this case, living or dead. While at the same time, the defense will try and paint a picture of Pete Beck as not just a victim and a scapegoat, but an honest, hard-working, patriotic guy. Peter Beck sat in the courtroom quietly taking notes today as Assistant Attorney General Dan Caceres continued using the lead securities investigator to identify documents that will be used to prosecute the ex-state representative. For them, the issue is, when did Pete Beck stop lying? For example, he claimed to be simply an accountant for the investment company TML, but company documents tell a different story. So this lists Peter Beck as, as, as what? Chief Financial Officer. Of what company? Uh, of the management team of TML. Then there's the hundreds of thousands of dollars invested and lost by a company called Michael Farms. Mr. Beck in the uh, 23 hearing testified that he had never heard of Michael Farms until after the investment was made. The emails indicate that um, he was aware. Because the emails are sent when? Uh, prior to the date of the investment. Late in the day, it was the other side's turn. Beck's team trying to establish that investigators weren't thorough or tough enough on the fraud victim, Tom Walter, who came forward and started the investigation. They're also suggesting they'll challenge the chain of evidence on things like damning laptop email evidence that came from the computer Beck left with his previous employer, a Milford CPA firm. Did you notice anything fun funny about some of them? Uh, what do you mean by funny? Well, on some of them, and we can give you a list, go okay. through a list of them tomorrow, but on some of them, the sender's not listed. On some of them, the recipient isn't identified. Uh, some of them, the, the header is just non-traditional. Um, this could be things that um, kind of got messed up in, in BCI's forensic exam, or they could be things that were uh, changed in the emails before the hard drive was shared by Donahue Cup. One of the most interesting moments of the day came this morning when Harvey McCleskey read an employee suggestion sheet submitted by Pete Beck to Christopher Technologies. CTEC, as it's called, is one of the mostly bogus companies involved in the case, which defrauded investors out of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Beck was the company's CFO. Clearly expecting to be there for a long time, Beck suggested the company needed to add things like college tuition plans, a fitness program, pet insurance, and to begin a bring your pet to work day. The CEO of that now defunct company will testify against Pete Beck during the trial. In the newsroom, Rich Jaffe, Local 12 News. Brad? Rich, thank you very much. Testimony from the state securities investigators will continue tomorrow, and the trial is slated to run at least four weeks.